Scorpion, Rain, and Reptile are all getting new attacks in Mortal Kombat 1. And that's not speculation, that's not a rumor, a developer at NetherRealm Studios straight up confirmed this news. However, I wouldn't be surprised if other characters are also getting new attacks as well. And then on top of that, let's talk about what's in store for the next season of Mortal Kombat 1. All that and more discussed in today's video. Because another day means more Mortal Kombat 1 news. I'm covering it all the time on this channel, so if you want to stay up to date, then make sure to subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss any future videos. And then after watching, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like down below, it helps the channel out a ton. And also, might I recommend this video on screen? It's an awesome watch, and I think you'll enjoy it a lot. So make sure to check it out after watching today's video. And without any further ado, let's begin, starting off with the new attacks. As mentioned earlier at the very start of this video, it's not speculation, it's not a rumor. Instead, Stephanie herself has confirmed that Rain, Reptile, and Scorpion are all getting new attacks when Ermac arrives. And if you don't believe me, let's hop over to Twitter so you can see it for yourself. The initial tweet was actually from Mortal Kombat 1 about the Ermac and Movado combat cast. But then right below that, we have Dr. Platinum asking the important questions. Use this emoji as your answer. How many characters will be getting new moves with this patch? And as you can see, Stephanie Brownback wasted no time and replied almost immediately with a snake emoji, a scorpion emoji, and a thundercloud emoji. And of course, all of us watching know exactly what that means. Reptile, Scorpion, and Rain are all going to get new attacks. Now, I've actually already covered Reptile's new attacks in this video because we see them in the Ermac trailer. Now, with that being said, I would not be surprised or shocked if Reptile gets even more moves on top of that. Because keep in mind, it was an Ermac trailer, so the gameplay was mostly about him, but then on top of that, I think Netherrealm wanted to sneak in some of the new attacks that would be arriving with this new update, and it's gonna be a big update, it looks like. But since we already know that Reptile's going to get new attacks, let's talk about the other two characters. First up, we have Scorpion. This guy is definitely in need of some updates, and new attacks are a great step in the right direction. For anyone not aware, most people do agree that Scorpion is the weakest character in the game. Now with that being said, once again, I must reiterate that no character in Mortal Kombat 1 is bad. Some characters are just less good than others, but nobody is terrible. And for some reason, a lot of players are under the misconception that Sub-Zero is the worst character, but he's not. Scorpion is definitely way more lacking than Sub-Zero. And if we're being honest, Natara is pretty much tied with them as well. I would say they are the bottom three, and most players do agree with that unless you live under a rock or just have some really heavy bias. Most casual players, competitive players, and even pro players do agree that those three need some assistance, and Scorpion is typically who everyone considers to be the weakest. But as you all know, I love making these videos interactive, so let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, especially if you're a Scorpion main. What new attacks do you want this character to have? For me personally, I want him to have some better mids. Scorpion is pretty much a whiff punish character right now. Very similar to Melina, only his range is way better, and his damage is a little bit lower. But as of right now, he does not have any great pressure tools, and his mids are severely lacking. If you go for his mid launcher, yeah, it's safe on block, except the opponent can duck the follow-up, which means you eat a full combo. So that mid is not that good. I think Scorpion definitely deserves a new string that is safe on block and easy to hit confirm, and starts with a mid. That would be a big step in the right direction in my opinion. But of course on top of that, having a new way to get in would also be awesome, because as of right now, what I see most Scorpion players do is an EX air teleport, which gives them a jump in on the way down, or they can do an empty jump and trick the opponent in that way, right? But it always costs a bar. I think Scorpion needs another way to get in safely, aside from an EX teleport. I think he needs something else. But once again, I'm not the Scorpion main, so everyone else who plays Scorpion Scorpion, let me know your thoughts down below, because like I keep saying in every video, I truly do read each and every comment, so grab that keyboard and make your voices heard. Because next up, it's time to talk about Rain. I'm a bit confused here because I consider Rain to be a strong character. Not amazingly strong, he's not top 10 or anything, but Rain is definitely a really good character. He's got 50-50s that guarantee more 50-50s, he can force a hard to block situation, he's got a lot of ways to keep himself safe, he can zone, he can counter zone. Some things don't work entirely correctly, like his water bubble can still lose to some projectiles, which is weird. That needs an update, but it's not a new attack. Once again, in all honesty, I feel like Rain 
has a bit of everything in this game. He has so many special moves. He's not really the premier zoner that Netherrealm said he was. Instead, he's more of a mid-range kind of whiff punish fighter, which I guess you could still consider a zoner, but people were expecting Deadshot, right? Or Sinestro, and that's not just his character. Instead, Rain actually has some pretty good mix-ups up close. He's actually the only character in the game with a Kara throw, which I think might still be a glitch. I don't think that was intentional, but it's in the game, and Netherrealm purposely did not get rid of it, possibly because Sonic Fox likes it so much and they like Sonic Fox, but that's neither here nor there. My point is, up close, Rain's pretty good, but even from a distance, he has a ton of different moves. What are you gonna give him, a teleport? He's already got that too. Rain has so many things. But even so, it looks like Netherrealm is giving him even more attacks, because once again, we see on Twitter how many characters are getting new moves not just getting balanced, like entirely new moves, so that's crazy. Some of you were doubting in my previous video. You said, oh, Reptile's just been improved. He's not getting entirely new moves. Well, here you go. Unless this tweet is a bit misleading or I'm misinterpreting things, it looks like these characters are straight up getting new moves. But okay, as mentioned earlier, I think other characters could be getting new moves as well, or at least I hope that's the case, because otherwise these three characters feel a bit random. Reptile, kind of mid-tier, yeah, he's painfully mid-tier, and I do want him to get some help, but there is other characters that are suffering way more. You know that one cartoon meme where the kid is drowning due to negligence? That's Scorpion, Sub-Zero, and Natara. Reptile is kind of fine, and so is Rain. So they're the two teens not paying attention, and then here's Scorpion drowning, right? That's the meme in my head. So next up, let's talk about Sub-Zero. I don't think this character is bad. Yes, he is lacking, but honestly, as someone who plays Sub-Zero quite a lot, I cook with him. When I switch to Sub-Zero, my my friends all know that they're in trouble, and keep in mind some of my friends reach Elder God like every combat league, so they're scared of my Sub-Zero to be sure. So once again, I don't think Sub-Zero is bad. That can be an unpopular opinion depending on who you ask, but I don't think he's terrible. I do think he needs some help though, and I think one of the big reasons a lot of people dislike Sub-Zero's gameplay in Mortal Kombat 1 is because he's not the counter zoner he used to be. In pretty much every other Mortal Kombat game, regardless of whether or not Sub-Zero was good or bad, he he was always the counter zoner, right? If you did your projectile and he did his, you got frozen. He only got hit, which meant he could slide in or dash in, get a full combo, you get the idea. And with the help of cameos, that would actually make Sub-Zero really strong. But the issue as of right now is his ice ball is really slow. I think instead, the developers want you to use his deadly vapors, but you're only frozen for a split second. So it's not a very good trade option, right? So I think Sub-Zero, needs a new way to force that trade, I think Sub-Zero needs a new attack to make him the counter zoner that we all know and love. For example, here's a wild idea. I was playing Mythologies the other day and remembered that Sub-Zero has an air ice ball. So why not give him that in Mortal Kombat 1, but instead of having it go horizontally, have an option to angle it downward at the opponent, kind of like Tanya can do in Mortal Kombat 1. Just imagine that, jumping in, throwing the ice ball, catching the opponent, freezing them for trying to zone you, that sounds pretty strong and cool. Or hey, why not give him a parry? And if this parry trades with anything, including a projectile, he teleports right behind the opponent for a full punish. That would be really sick. Once again, very similar to Tanya. I'm kind of stealing from Tanya here, but I'm just saying Sub-Zero needs to be a counter zoner, I think. But of course, on top of all of that, Sub-Zero also needs some buffs, right? He's got way too many gaps in his string. I think his whiff punishes are way too slow, especially his mid option. And let's be honest, his ice clone goes away far too quickly. These three changes definitely need to happen, but on top of that, I want to see some new moves as well. But once again, I'm not a Sub-Zero pro, so if anybody plays Sub-Zero religiously in the comment section, please let me know your thoughts. What new attacks and updates and buffs do you want to see? Season 5 of Mortal Kombat 1 is finally here, and you know what that means. We get the Dark Raiden season. So when you beat Invasion, you are going to get the Dark Raiden skin that you see in story mode. However, there is a catch. It's like likely not going to be Mortal Kombat 11 Raiden's face. It's still going to be Mortal Kombat 1 Raiden, but he's just cosplaying. Or at least that's the rumor, that's what I think is gonna happen. And the reason I feel that way is because data miners have already found these costumes in the files of Mortal Kombat 1, and of course they posted them online, and as we can see, it is Mortal Kombat 1 Raiden's face, but he's wearing the dark Raiden costume from Mortal Kombat 11. Which for me personally is not that big of a deal, but what I do really want 
want to see is the red lightning. Even if it is Mortal Kombat 1 Raiden's face, that's okay, just give me the red lightning. It was so cool in Mortal Kombat 11 how Raiden had green lightning, which I called the Mountain Dew lightning, and then he also had the white lightning when you picked his 1992 movie costume, that was sick too. I love when Raiden has different colored lightning, so please Netherrealm, give me red lightning. But of course, don't forget that Raiden's not going to be the only character that gets new costumes. Literally every character is going to get a new palette swap that fits the Dark Raiden theme. I'm not sure how that's going to look. It could be too similar to Natara's Season of Blood if they're not careful with the blacks and the reds, right? Maybe a lot more gold is going to be the difference. But then on top of that, don't forget there's always new costumes as well that get introduced, but just for certain characters. Sometimes this does predict the Titan battles, but not always. And then of course we have the Shrine, which also always gets an update, and it's definitely going to have some new costumes in there for free that you can unlock with the in-game currency, and that's going to be awesome. Because don't forget, there's still several costumes in story mode that we haven't gotten access to yet. For example, we have the Secret Agent costume for Johnny Cage, that's still not unlockable yet. We have the Festival costumes for a lot of the characters, that also has not been unlockable yet, so one of those, or both, could definitely end up in the shrine and that would be awesome. I'm sure there's some costumes I'm missing that we've seen in story mode or some other mode that I'm forgetting about but could also end up in the shrine. But no matter what the case may be, I'm still just so happy that Mortal Kombat 1 keeps giving us free content. Sometimes there's a delay and that does suck, and I'm also really hoping this Ermac update does not break the game in any way, because so far that's been happening for every single update. The Quan Chi update was terrible and nearly ruined the game when it came to online. Tons of desyncs everywhere, and then when Peacemaker got here, there were still some new bugs, like a bunch of characters can start the round early and pretty much get a free hit on your character, which is never fun, and also extremely unfair. But thankfully, most players do not know how to take advantage of that glitch, and even more players aren't even aware the glitch exists because most of us are just normie casuals out here playing the game and having fun. Let's be real. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like down below. It helps my channel out a ton. And then finish that combo by subscribing and ringing that bell so you never miss any future videos. Make sure to come back next time, and as always, stay underdogs.